I want to work towards this step here. Um, so what I'm going to do is to build these three parts, one, two, and three, and then try and put them together in an assembly. I've got a ready-made servo motor. You've got the files of how to make the servo motor. And I'll have a look and see if I can download uh, these screws. I won't worry about the rubber feet at the moment, but you can um, have a think about that if you want to. So first of all, we want to make part one, and I've got the drawing file up here. Um, I'll just zoom in on that a bit so we can see what's going on. Um, there you go. That's what we're going to be drawing. So I'll move that over out of the way. And I'll start a new part. Start 2D sketch. Uh, I'll do this on the XY plane. I'll try and remember to use the XY plane for parts that are going to be flat. I guess that'll just help a bit. This part starts off looking like a rectangle. I'm going to do a center rectangle so I can have it centered on my origin. And I'm told it's 95 millimeters wide and 144 high. Um, so that looks fine. And this is all made out of 3 millimeter acrylic. So I'm just going to extrude everything straight away to be 3 millimeters. Um, Next, um, let's fillet these edges here. Uh, they're not marked on my diagram, I guess. I'll just go with something like five. I can always come back and change that later. Um, actually, that doesn't quite look like enough, just looking at the picture I've got. So I'm going to go with ten. And then I'm also going to put them in there, and there, and there, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, next up, I'm going to draw this diamond that turns up in the center. Um, not quite sure yet how I want to do that. One thing just to notice now, it's a it's basically a square of side 58 uh, rotated through 45 degrees. Um, and it's not really clear where on the diagram it should fit. That's because, in a way, it doesn't really matter. You know, if, if this is a bit... For, it's it's going to be symmetric, so it, the central axis of the diamond, the rotated square, should also be the central axis of the rectangle. Um, but it doesn't really matter if it sits two millimeters higher or two millimeters lower. I'll just try and get it roughly right. Um, so let's see what we can do. I'm going to do maybe a three-point center rectangle. Uh, what happens here? Yeah, that's not so bad. Um, Let's try that again. So as long as my center is somewhere on that line, I'm happy. Um, what I want is for this to be at 45 degrees. Um, and I guess I will make that one 58 millimeters. And I'll make this one 58 millimeters. And that looks like pretty much what I wanted. Um, the last dimension that I'll put in is from here to here, and I'm going to make that, uh, let's try 25. That looks like it's in a reasonable position. The one on my diagram is maybe slightly higher up, slightly further towards the top. Um, so I'm going to make that uh, 28. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with that now. The last thing I'll do is to uh, fillet the corners of it. And two's maybe not quite enough. Let's go with five. Hmm. 
For some reason that first fillet never changed its size, so we'll start that again. Uh, I'm happy with that filleting. It looks like this um, is just wandering around a bit. So what I want to do is make that axis parallel. Uh, uh, let's just put in some construction lines around the center, um, just so I've got those. And another line here. Uh, that looks OK. Turn off construction. And I'm going to try and make this line parallel to that construction line. Doesn't work. Um, well, what I'll do instead is horizontally align the center there with my origin. Not quite what I wanted. Try vertically aligning better. That looks OK now. And in fact, that's starting to look pretty good. Uh, there's a sign down here saying two dimensions needed. I think that's just going to be the, the length of the two construction lines I put in, and everything else is locked in place. So I'm fairly happy with that. Um, and I'm going to click Finish Sketch, and then I'm going to extrude, cut that through. And we've got something that's looking pretty good for part one. Uh, the last thing that I need to do to make that part, except for maybe some cosmetic stuff that I might do later on, like putting in a title, you know, this is a good place to write your group number or something like that. But save that for much, much later. Now we need this square of... Um, circles of, of holes and um, we want them to be spaced at 51 millimeters and they need to be aligned on the same axes as this um, square here is so what I'll probably do is use that the center of that square which I know is 28 millimeters above my origin I'll use that as a kind of um, center point for those um, holes as well uh, so I'm just going to put in a point actually exactly where I want it to be. Um, I'll click on there and then if I dimension between that point and the origin and make that 28 um, and I guess I want to vertically constrain that point with the origin and now we're fully constrained. So that's the center of that grid of holes that I want. Um, What's the best thing going to be now? Um, well, let's make one of the holes. Now, for the diameter, uh, there's a note. If you want your M3 bolts to pass straight through a hole, you want them that hole to be about 3.3 millimeters, And that's the case here, actually. These bolts go through these holes, and then there's a nut on the other side. So I'm going to make this 3.3. And now I guess I need to put in some positions. And I know that the horizontal distance there should be 51 divided by 2. And in fact, the vertical distance there should also be 51 divided by 2. Uh, and that's now in the right place. Um, I've got a bunch of options now about how to put in the other ones. Let's just try a circular constraint on that geometry about that axis. Putting in four of them. That's worked OK. Um, so th that circular pattern, uh, if I just move things around a bit so you can see more clearly what's going on. Uh, not sure why we've got that 360 there. or indeed why I can't move it. Um, but anyway, what I'm reasonably happy with is that the those holes are in about the right place. One thing that can be important, um, I'm going to leave those holes patterned as they are, but you might want sometimes to put in holes with individual dimensions so that it's really easy to move one hole around without having to move the rest around. I'm going to say I'm happy with these. I might come to regret that decision. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to finish that sketch 
and I can extrude it, um, cut through all, and I guess it's that circle, that circle, that circle, and that circle. Okay. And that looks pretty good. That is what I wanted for part one. Um, just so that I've done it, I'll make the material... Um, I can't remember what I've been using for this. Well, I think I'll come back and think about that later. I can't see acrylic at the moment. Let's just leave it as generic um, and we'll, we'll try and find something that works well. And um, I don't know, I'll make it cyan. Beautiful. Okay. And I can save that, uh, save as, um, I'll make a new folder, me on um, two, I've already made one in the past, so that's fine, and it is in fact part one. Um, I'll put a space in there, just so it's clear it's not just named part one by mistake. Okay, there's part one, uh, file, new... Um, standard part and now what we want is part 2 uh, which looks like that uh, this isn't totally clear on this particular picture um, but uh, this is a square of side 58 uh, with another rectangle cut out of the middle of it and four holes cut into it. Um, so you can probably imagine the idea is that these four holes are going to match up with the four holes that we've already um, cut in the other piece, so they should be spaced at 51 millimeters. Um, and we'll see what these holes have to match up with. I think it's going to be the servo motor and then the servo motor kind of pokes through this gap here. That's the idea. Uh, anyway, let's make the part first and then worry about it later. Um, start a 2D sketch again. This is a, a piece that sits flat within the assembly. It doesn't matter too much how you want to um, define your planes, but it's reasonably uh, convenient for me just to make all these flat pieces sit on the XY plane, and then when I come to import them into an assembly later, they'll be in the right orientation. Uh, this uh, piece, part two, is 58 by 58. Um, I think I'll do the same kind of fillets as before. We had them at 5 before and that looked fine. It's the kind of thing where I might want to come back and change it later, but that's reasonably quick to do. Um, that's fine. And I am happy with that, so I'm going to finish that sketch and then extrude it uh, 3 millimeters. Uh, now I'll sketch on here, and I want to cut away this hole in the middle. Um, now, the hole in the middle is where the servo motor sits. Just worth noting at the moment, um, what I don't know is where on the square this hole should sit. Uh, it's not on the diagram, so I'm just going to have to make a guess or an estimate at it. It's clearly not... it's centred on that axis there, but it's not centered along that axis there. Um, let's start by cutting a 23 by 12.2 square, and then I guess that's about 12 eyeballing it from the bottom edge, so that's what I'll go with. Um, all of these things I can come back later and fix them if I don't like them. Uh, so this is uh, I said 23 by 12.2, uh, wrong way round, uh, 12.2 by 23, and then what I was going to do, the dimension that I sort of eyeballed and was happy with, is that that should be about 12. Um, yeah, that looks okay to me. I am 
happy with that and it looks like there's something not fully constrained so I'm just going to make the center of the rectangle vertically constrained to the center of the origin of the the whole thing everything is fully constrained and that looks fine uh, so I'll extrude cut that through all okay not bad um, now what I've got is a bunch of holes to cut uh, just to show you the holes I mean They're these ones these four and then these two um, I know pretty well the position of these two holes relative to the um, the rectangle that I've cut in the middle so that's nice and easy I'm just looking at my actual me arm that I've got in front of me and those two holes need to be tapped in fact all the holes in this need to be tapped so I'm going to make them all about 2.7 millimeters if in doubt go for the smaller hole size and you can always um, ream them out later but if you make them too big uh, it's difficult to go back and fill them in later so let's sketch um, we want a circle here somewhere and I've said they're going to be 2.7 millimeter diameter and I know from my diagram that that length there is 3.1 and that length there is 11.1 and that's now fully constrained um, again I could mirror that over here but instead what I'm going to do is just to create another circle and put it in um, actually I'll, I guess I do want it to be vertically aligned against that one you, you'll have seen as I'm putting this in there are various potential constraints coming along and sort of um, adding themselves in automatically sometimes you want to be a bit careful about that because you don't necessarily want the constraints that the software is trying to give you. Uh, that looks fine. And then I want this dimension to be the same 3.1. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, what should I do next um, I know that I want my holes in the corners here well I really want them to align with that fillet uh, again they're going to be 2.7 um, but I, my feeling is right if I looks to me like And that snap. There we go, uh, 2.7. Now, if I just go and inspect here and find the distance between those, I really want it to be 51, and at the moment it's 48. Um, so, what I'm going to need to do is actually change these fillets. Um, which is a bit of a pain. I don't know if, how easy it is to do that. Um, of course, the uh, this is all on the previous sketch. Um, let me just finish this sketch temporarily and go back to the original sketch, edit that and instead of these fillets being 5 um, I want to move everything by 1.5 millimeters in two directions. So I'm just going to try making the 3.5 I could go and measure this off the part as well obviously uh, let's finish that sketch then go back and edit this sketch and now 
It seems to me like only one of those changed. So I better go back again, edit the sketch um, dimension. What's that? That's also 3.5. It's also 3.5. Okay, that should be fine. So those have all changed. We'll edit this sketch. Um, what's confusing me now is why that center there Should be different to that center there. So I'm just going to try getting rid of everything, project in the geometry of those four. This is maybe looking a bit better. Um, now if I if I just check, um, I want to measure the distance between that and that, and I've got 51 millimeters. If I do the same thing and measure the distance between that and that, also 51 millimeters. So all of a sudden that's better. Those are now spaced as I want them to be. Um, and what I'm going to do is to produce a circle here, 2.7. Um, and we'll do the same for each of these, 2.7, 2.7. Um, and I think I can finish that sketch it says everything's fully constrained so that's good and now I'll extrude and I'll extrude one two three four five six cuts through all okay yeah that looks okay to me now um, obviously it's slightly confusing with this being a 45 degrees, but I guess if I tip my head, it looks okay. Um, it looks like everything's in about the right place there. Um, so I'm going to assume that's okay, and I'm going to save that as part two. And let's now say um, we'll make a third part. Uh, we need to make part three. Here's the drawing. Looks a bit easier this time. Looks like most of the information we need is on the drawing. So maybe that spacing there would be useful. Um, well, I guess again we'll eyeball it. All of these things, if, if it becomes important, I can measure them um, off the part always. Again, this is the third piece in a row that sits flat within my assembly, um, so I am going to sketch it on the XY plane again. And it sort of starts from being a rectangle of dimensions 31.9 by 24.5. That seems like an okay start, and I'll fill it the corners been using five so I'll keep using five. I don't think these fillets are really going to make or break anything to be honest. Um, they might be a way of saving, saving some material, making it look a bit smarter. Those are the kinds of things you might worry about. Um, finish that sketch, extrude the whole thing to three millimeters. Uh, one thing I didn't do with part two I've just realized is to make it a nice color. Um, I will make it all oh, magenta. That's beautiful. Uh, anyway, getting back to this part, we will sketch on the front surface, and now I'm going to make that center rectangle. That's 23 by 12.4. Um, actually, I probably didn't want to center that right on the origin. That might constrain me in a way I don't want. So instead I'm going to go over here and say it's 23 by 12.4. That's the size of rectangle I want. And then I'll just dimension how close it should be to the origin. I'm going to make that one millimeter to the, the left of the origin. And that's sort of in the right kind of place. Uh, now let's have a two point rectangle here. This one needs to be um, 
2 by uh, that height isn't specified so I'm going to make it 5 um, that's actually going to be where a part of the servo motor comes through so I might err on the side of caution there and go with 5.5 in fact I can see that size on the arm I've got in front of me at the moment it looks like it's just over 5 so I think 5.5 I just measured it off the uh, the arm itself I think 5.5 is pretty good um, let's just get that dimension somewhere more helpful I'm gonna want to trim that Okay, it doesn't look like it's going to let me trim it. Um, although maybe if I delete that dimension and then click trim, does that disappear? No. What happens if I delete that dimension? Okay, so now we've got the shape we want and now we can start dimensioning things again. I don't know, there was something, well, you saw something that it wasn't going to let me do. Um, let's put that in as 2, that in as 5.5, and then I what I'd quite like to do is make um, these two lines here equal in length. Um, let's see if I can do that. That's worked okay, um, but it's moved this slightly off center so I will horizontally constrain that to there um, it's saying there's still one dimension needed and it's uh, ah, okay I see what can change um, so I don't want to do what I just did and in fact what I want to do is horizontally align that point and that point vertically align that point and that point and now everything's fully constrained um, and that's pretty much where I want things to be I'm just looking again at the actual part description and I think that distance there is a bit smaller than that distance there so just that makes me feel like this could be 0 0.5 I don't know if that's any better I'll split the difference 0 0.75 um, so sometimes you're just eyeballing things trying to see whether they look all right or not uh, finish that sketch extrude cut through all okay and then the last thing I need to do is add in these holes uh, these need to be through holes so they're going to be 3.3 um, millimeters and somewhere out here 3.3 millimeters I've got a clear steer that they should be 16 from that edge there um, and I guess what I don't know is what height they should be at um, so I'm going to say I want them about halfway up there let's make that three millimeters up from the edge and I will also make another one of those again I could do this by mirroring but I'm just worried what might happen if I wanted to um, align the these two holes differently later on so I'm not going to do it by mirroring instead I'm just gonna use I think I just accidentally hit a button there um, I'm just going to use dimensioning it as I want to and what I've got there is two holes that are mirror images of each other but they're mirror images because I've dimensioned to, them to be so um, and now I can extrude cut through all again 
and click OK. Uh, make this light red. That's going to look really nice. File save as part three. Um, okay, now what I'm going to do is to make an assembly. And to do that, I need to choose something to be grounded, um, or it's always a good idea to start with something that's grounded. I'm going to make my base plate grounded, so I'm going to put that in first grounded at the origin, and then try and get everything else aligned relative to that. And I'm heading for this here. Um, one thing to note straight away, I don't, because of the way Inventor works, I don't always have to use exactly the same order of steps as are in these instructions. Um, it'll be helpful quite often to sort of think in the same order, but um, obviously I don't have quite as many physical constraints. I can move parts around more easily in Inventor than I can in reality. And so I'll start by grounding that plate, then I'll probably align this uh, square plate above it. Um, attach the servo motor and the smaller part three plate and then I'll see where I stand and whether the one thing that's going to be important is if all my holes line up and I just want to demonstrate how to make sure that happens even if I haven't quite got the part files right so uh, new assembly and this is going to be our uh, our base assembly uh, so I want engineering design exercise of me arm two and um, part one place that grounded at the origin and hit escape we've got part one in place and uh, now what I wanted to do I said was to put in oh, part two doesn't seem to have picked up its color yet so I better save it um, otherwise it won't look quite so exciting um, put in part two and now this is interesting. I mean, uh, this is the advantage of having drawn them both on the XY plane, that they line up in those ways quite nicely. Um, let's have a look and see. Am I able to constrain uh, that axis to that axis? I am. Um, and I'm going to apply that and just close the constraints for the time being, because I also want to constrain uh, that axis and that axis apply okay that's nice so now if we just look at things in the front view what's happening this slides up and down but it no longer rotates so i've got things right there these two holes are spaced at 51 millimeters and these two holes are spaced at 51 millimeters so it's relatively easy to constrain um, I have a feeling these holes, it won't work quite so well because I haven't spaced them the same way on each part, but we'll come and look at how to deal with that. Um, I don't yet know what kind of height I want this to be at. Um, just so that it's fixed though, because I've started, I'm going to put in a, a height constraint just by eyeball. Um, and I'm going to say I want them to be a centimeter apart, 10 millimeters. That sort of looks okay. I don't know if that's exactly right, but we can always come back. Um, that constraint is here in the model tree, sorry, here in the model tree, and I could just edit it and make it 12 millimeters instead if I wanted to. So that's how you go back and change things that you've already constrained. Um, now what I want to do, just check that the things that should be fixed are fixed. That looks fine. Um, I'm gonna place my servo motor into the assembly. Um, and you can see the servo motor I haven't drawn on the same set of axes, so it turns up at the wrong angle. It's not the end of the world. Um, and what I want to do is first of all to constrain... The way it should work is that this top of the servo motor should poke through that gap there. So I'm going to constrain uh, this face to the bottom of the magenta part two and apply that and now I can move this around and that's roughly how the servo motor sits although I just need to check <coughs> uh, on the manual the servo motor 
the the cylindrical part of the servo motor should be towards the um, unused end of part one. So let's just get, uh, and that's in fact the opposite way to the way I've got it at the moment. So I guess a uh, way to get that is to constrain this face, or in fact, uh, cancel that, constrain, it's really this face sits up against that face there. Apply. And again, just looking at what is left in terms of mobility and what's not there, I can only slide in that direction, so I need to find one last constraint, and I'm going to make uh, this face sit up against that face. Apply. So my servo motor is now pretty much in place. Um, I'm happy with that. It doesn't move around. One thing to note: I don't, um, I haven't made that gap big enough, and so the servo motor is. Um, I'm just sorry. I'm just looking at my. Uh, physical model. That one centimeter isn't quite enough, so the servo motor sits below the base plate here. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go back and change that um, one centimeter or 12 millimeters. Uh, I will edit that and make it 16. And then now, um, crucially, the servo motor sits up off the ground. Uh, so that's fine. That's good. Um, now I want to place one more part, which is part three. Uh, put that into the assembly and um, one thing we just need to think about again this part three has a notch at one end which is where the um, the wires actually go for the servo motor so I'm just going to look and see where that notch should be it is at the end that doesn't have the cylindrical part at it uh, so that's okay so again, uh, constrain the top face of this should touch onto there, I know. I can apply that. I'm just going to pull this right out of the way. Um, we know now, it's just a bit weird, a bit difficult to see, but that is actually constrained vertically now. Uh, we know that that face there should sit up against that face there. Apply that. Um, and now if I just look at the mobility of this part, the only thing that's missing is uh, constraint in that direction. Um, you can see it just slides sideways now. And so I'll constrain that face to that face. Apply. And I can close that. So now I've got everything in uh, in place and, and fixed roughly where I want it. But you'll remember when I made part three, I wasn't really sure where some holes in it were supposed to go. So what I'm going to try and do now is open it in context. Um, if I double click on the part for some reason that's not working uh, let's close it and then now if I double click on it um, I can see part 3 there as it is uh, within the assembly and what I'm going to do is this extrusion 3 was the one where I set where those holes ought to go and I'm going to edit that sketch and what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, delete all of the constraints on those holes that come within that sketch, um, because I really want them to line up with these holes here. So I'll project, uh, in fact, I won't project it. I will project it as construction, project that hole and that hole. Um, and now what I can do is to say, is this a coincident constraint? Coincident, the center of that with the center of that, the center of that with the center of that. And I can finish sketch. And at least now what I know is that the, the bolts that go through that top hole in part three will then, uh, sorry, that lower hole in part three will mate with the um, Uh, 
with the hole in part two. So you can do this a lot in building up this assembly where what you're going to do is to roughly get a part as you want it but then within the assembly you can move some details around to match up with other parts that you've already created and doing that intelligently is really one of the skills of this entire um, assignment I think or certainly the, in the uh, inventor work within this assignment. Um, okay so that is now looking good and if I just look front on what I've got is that all my holes are aligned and so that hole uh, if I flip it over, I should be able to see here that it, um, because I want the bolt to go through the red part three and then to tap on the magenta part two, the red part three has a slightly larger hole. That's the 3.3 millimeter diameter hole. The uh, magenta part two has the 2.7 millimeter diameter hole. And I can see one through the other when I look at that end view. Um, last but not least, I should just put in some um, uh, bolts. I'll just show you this to start with and then you can play around and see what you can find. Um, I'm going to go with hex. Um, I've listed somewhere. I said I used DIN 7985. Let's see if we can see those anywhere or indeed if I can search for them. Um, nothing jumping out at me there. I can't even remember whether the ones I used were round head or... Um, Interesting. I was hoping that they would be there. Um, well, let's try something else. Let's just go back to hex head. Um, and all I really want is a straight screw. Um, oh, sorry, a straight bolt. Let's see if I can search for uh, 7985. There we go. Um, and I've uh, used hex. So, ooh, sorry, I've used. Um, it, it looks like the difference there is in the head. Anyway, I'm going to use that size there and when I put them in I can choose M3 uh, by 20 millimeters. I'm sort of uh, working this out as I go along but that looks okay. Let's just check whether there's anything there that I want. I don't think so. Um, okay so let's use M3 by 20 millimeters uh, and I'm going to want four so I'm just going to drop those in then hit escape and then finally uh, I can start constraining these so the central axis of that needs to go on the central axis of that. Um, apply and the bottom face there and the face there need to be meeting. Apply. And that's basically, I'm happy with that. If anything, there's a slight worry that that isn't reaching all the way. Um, I can put in a longer bolt there if I wanted to, um, but I'm going to just say that's that's all right. That's about how I want things. And then I'll go on and do, finish off these just to, to finish off this video. Uh, constrain there and there. Apply. That face and that face. Apply.
Um, so all I'm doing here is just getting those four bolts into the position I want them to be in. Um, then you could imagine adding nuts. You can add in the two bolts here, and then you've started to get... Um, I suppose you could even check and add in whatever spindle fitting is required on there, and, and you started to build up your assembly. So this is how I would recommend going about the initial inventor modeling of the assembly um, for this assignment. And then at some stage, you can get to... Uh, I'll just show you, um, just to finish off, this is my uh, me arm. You can see it's made up of a whole bunch of sub-assemblies. That's probably going to be useful to you when you come to it. Um, I can't remember how much mobility I've left it with. Uh, not a lot appears to be the answer. Um, but if you want, you can try and leave that so that things will move around. In any case, um, as you build it up, you'll get a, a much clearer feel for how to work with the possible mobility of the part or not. But this is what you want to try and build uh, in the end. And um, yeah, this assembly here is how to put together the first uh, three or four parts uh, plus some screws. One thing that I've said is I would leave the, the bolts and nuts until the very end. I think that's probably um, going to make your life easier because as long as your holes are nicely aligned, you'll find putting in the nuts and bolts is, is one of the easier steps. Um, so good luck with that, and we'll look forward to seeing your work and talking to you about it.